um, during the week when he was addressing the diplomatic community, in fact, uh, just ahead of our Independence Day celebration. That statement that he made is what has been subjected to a lot of conversation uh, throughout the week leading up to today. If you're just joining us, this is Key Point here on TV3. We're also live on 3FM 92.7. Also on uh, TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSTV channel 279, all across the world on freenews.com. We're also live on a number of radio stations across the country on Kiss Me 107.1 in Tamale and W93.5 in WA and beyond. Now, my guest will be joining me in a bit. We'll, we'll start this conversation, but just take a look at this. This is what the president said in text. And various aspects of the conversation will subject to some analysis this morning. Um, the specific issues that the president put out earlier today. He says that he is aware that last week's bipartisan passage by Parliament of the proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values bill on a private member's motion has raised considerable anxieties in certain quarters of the diplomatic community and amongst some friends of Ghana that she may be turning her back, that is Ghana may be turning our back on them. Hitherto, enviable, long-standing record on human rights, observance, and attachment to the rule of law. The president assures, or he, he said he would want to assure them, the diplomatic community, that no such backsliding will be contemplated or occasioned. He continues that... Quote, I think it will serve little purpose to go at this stage into the details of the origin of this proposed law. So take note of that. The details of the origin of this proposed law. And what, what's the origin? The origin is that it emanated from a private member's motion. And you know the conversation we've had about laws in the view of the president that have financial implications, possible financial implications emanating through a private member's motion. It says that the details of this proposed law, which is yet to reach his desk. So what is the status of this anti-LGBTQ plus bill that was approved by parliament? Is yet to reach his desk. So what happens next? He says, but suffice to say that I have learned that today a challenge has been mounted at the Supreme Court by a concerned citizen to the constitutionality of the proposed legislation. In the circumstances, it will be as well for all of us to hold our hands and wait for the decision of the Supreme Court before any action is taken. The operation of the institutions of the Ghanaian state will determine the future trajectory of the rule of law and human rights compliance in our country. So that's what the president talks about. Now, the various aspects of this bill that has been approved by parliament which has been the concern of those who are opposed to it, or those who have raised concerns about certain aspects of, the, of this bill that has been approved by Parliament, is what we'll get into in a bit. The specific punitive measures in there. Questions have been raised as to why persons found to be engaged in LGBTQ activities should be subjected to a jail term for that matter, or why should people be imprisoned for their sexuality? That's what the likes of um, the CDD and some other 18 society organizations have been raising fundamental concerns about. 
and they have indicated their preparedness to go to the Supreme Court to also challenge aspects of this, of this bill. Now, joining me in studio is Member of Parliament for the North Town constituency. Is the ranking on the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Eighth Parliament of the Republic of Ghana. He has been a minister in a number of portfolios for today because of the conversation we're going to be having a former deputy education minister deputizing one who has been selected as the running mate for John Dramani Mahama. I'm not talking about the Honorable Samuel Okujato Ablakwa is joining us. Good morning to you. Zablaka. Good morning, Alfred. Good to see you. It's good to see you. It's been almost, what, a year since you appeared on this platform? <laughs> yes. It's been, been a over while. a year <laughs> since you appeared on, on Key Point. Mm -hmm. what, what have you been up to? It's, it's great to very, be back. It's great to be back indeed. Mepet took a lot of you, your attention. Yeah. How are the people doing? We are pulling through, doing our best to... Um, ensure that we are able to restore the dignity of our compatriots uh, who uh, have lost everything because of the uh, spillage from the Akosan work bomb dams by the VRA, which really um, is a national disaster. Uh, even though North Town is the epicenter, there are many other constituencies affected. So it's really a national disaster. And I must add that um, so far, uh, the good people of this country have been very kind to us. Uh, tremendous, you know, benevolence, goodwill, compassion, um, uh, reaching out to us, whether mm. as corporate Ghana, as foundations, individuals, families. And so that has helped us to, so far, house 600 of these displaced people. We've done two major resettlement projects. Mm. Uh, the sad uh, thing, however, is that we still have a lot of our compatriots living in tents as we speak, six months there now. There are still persons yeah. living in tents? Yes, this about 2,000 people are still 2,000 people? Yes, are still living in tents. Because the, the disaster was on such a huge scale. In my constituency alone, you have uh, uh, about 12,633 people displaced. NADMO mm. says that uh, they counted about uh, 1,500 homes totally, you know, uh, either damaged or submerged and therefore crumbled hmm. under the high waters. Um, so um, these are people who are now living in abject destitution, living like refugees uh, in these tents. And, and that's why there is a need to have, you know, a humanitarian response and to urge the government to wake up to uh, their obligations. I'm glad that finally the president um, uh, spoke about mm -hmm. the ongoing crisis during the uh, Six March address. I did criticize him. Yes, when, you raised concerns when, that he did when, not talk about it during the State of the Nation. about it during the message uh, on the State of the Nation. So I'm glad that he made amends, uh, except that when he said that 80 million cities uh, yes, has, in fact, has, let, has been released. I, I, I want us to, <laughs> we, to play that. Let, we, let's we hear specifically. Asking, released to who and to do what? Yeah, that's a question I wanted to ask you. because let, Let's hear exactly what the President said about Mepe during the Independence Day uh, celebration, the speech that he delivered, specifically about Mepe and how much money had been released, because of the concerns that you had raised, that that Mepe, the Akosombo spillage disaster did not find any space in the President's State of Nation address just about a week ago. This is what the President said during the week about Mepe. Take a look. I must at this stage reaffirm government's continued commitment to providing the support for victims of the recent extensive flooding in downstream communities in the greater Accra, Eastern, and Volta regions, caused by the spillage of the Akosombo Dam last year, and necessary action which was taken to maintain the dam's structural integrity. As set out in the 2024 budget, Government has set aside 220 million CDs, of which 80 million CDs has already been released by the Ministry of Finance to support the ongoing rehabilitation efforts 
for the affected communities. Government will stop at nothing to restore normalcy to the lives and livelihoods of all affected persons. So that's the president there. But at this point, let me also welcome Dr. Enoch in MP, who is a governance and leadership expert. Um, is the dean of the business uh, the school of business and communications at the Academy City University. Dr. Enoch, it's good to have you. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Alfred. I'm thrilled to be here as always. Also uh, joining us, and the Honorable Andy Apia is a member of Parliament for the Asantia Chim North Constituency Institute of the NPP. He's a private legal practitioner. He's going to be joining us in a bit, but. Also, Bobby Bansing is private legal practitioner. He's joining us on Zoom. Martin Pebo as well is going to be joining us uh, as a private legal practitioner as well. I have a, a, a team of lawyers this morning because of the, the legal issues we're going to be talking about, just for the benefit of our viewers. So, Mr. Blackwell, this is the president saying that 80 million out of the 220 million as announced in the 2024 budget has been released for the, the relief of the people, including those in your constituency who were affected by this spillage. What do you know about this? <clears throat> well, this information came to us as a surprise. I must be very honest with you. Um, I have, in the circumstance, filed an urgent question uh, seeking clarity. Um, you, you filed an urgent question? Yes, um, seeking clarity um, on this uh, release. Who was it released to? Because um, the president only said that released by the finance ministry mm -hmm. didn't indicate the destination, who was it released to, and what is it being used for? Um, is it the case that it was released just probably a few hours before his address, and that's why we haven't uh, seen any concrete uh, development on the ground in terms of what the money is being used for? Because um, you do know that so far, in terms of rehabilitation, construction-wise, to resettle the displaced persons, uh, nothing has started from the point of uh, government. Uh, all the uh, displaced homes uh, that we have constructed uh, have been done by us, you know, private-led initiative, uh, superintended by the MP's office. Uh, then if you look at um, what uh, has come in in terms of uh, support for uh, livelihoods, they've largely uh, been driven by NGOs such as uh, the Red Cross, uh, uh, the World Food Programme, uh, the, um, the UNICEF, uh, and, 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 and other groups in that, in that nature. The, uh, the, 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 the Muslim Council internationally have also come in uh, to assist and they are helping with stipends. Uh, and so it, it will be really important to know um, exactly uh, the destination for that release, who was it released to, what is it being used for. Is it a case that it's just probably a very recent release and so uh, it's now going to uh, materialize in, in, in actual terms on the ground? We will have to know. So I'm sure that as uh, we follow through with this agent question and we seek clarity, uh, from ministers of state, uh, things will be put in, in, proper, in proper perspective. But as I said, I welcome the president's um, uh, uh, final uh, statement on this matter because I thought it was an aberration, uh, quite an unpardonable one, that he uh, totally ignored the matter during the State of the Nation address. Uh, I, I must say that uh, so far, if we look at the response rate, I think that lessons have, have to be learned. I, I have read the very incisive uh, article on the matter by the respected uh, Colonel Festus Abwaji, who, who has asked that uh, we need to draw lessons in terms of how we respond when it comes to these, these disasters, that we have to be prepared. Speaking from the perspective of parliament, it is for this reason that under Article 177 of the Constitution, we have a contingency fund so that when these disasters, these emergencies occur, there will be a fund to take care of them. And I kept uh, reiterating, if you recall, that in 2023, we approved about 533 million in the contingency fund. In 2024, there's another billion cities in the contingency fund. And the reason why we have the contingency fund, now if you look at the provisions of the Constitution, the government can even spend once there's an emergency, you just have to 
come to Parliament and account. Make sure that the Finance Committee of Parliament has information and has the details of that expenditure so that, you know, things can go faster than the normal, you know, everyday uh, expenditure of government. It's not clear what happened, why the contingency fund was not brought to bear uh, to really ameliorate the plight of these victims. But uh, as academics and researchers uh, assess the situation, uh, as governance experts look at the various shortfalls and advise leadership on how to learn lessons moving forward, because nobody can really uh, uh, say that there wouldn't be disasters in the future. Uh, so what's really crucial is that lessons are learned and we have a different attitude moving forward to make sure that our response rate is fast and that we are able to move in and really let the people have confidence in, uh, in government, in their own nation, that when you've paid your taxes, when you have done all you must do as a citizen, when you've had to even bear the brunt so that all of us will have electricity, because we are told that if there was no spillage, the structural integrity of the dam will have been affected. The, uh, the dam will probably be no more now and will have <laughs> an even bigger crisis without electricity. So these people are taking a bullet for all of us, you know, if you like. And I think that we can be more uh, compassionate, more caring, and more responsive. But having said that, uh, I would like to emphasize all of what the good people of this country have done. Um, the national chief imam, he's been phenomenal with his support. And that's why we named a whole block after him uh, when we commissioned uh, the resettlement project, because uh, he's visited thrice and he's followed up to really uh, pray for people and to offer financial support relief items. And I, I, I am in total uh, uh, admiration for what he did. The Christian Council of Ghana, uh, the Ibrahim uh, Mahama Foundation, uh, First Sky Group, uh, Magdan, and so many other companies, uh, which uh, over 263, I think, are the last count. And we have been acknowledging them uh, very transparently. We set up an accountability elders council, so uh, they receive every donation. They are signatories to the account. I am not a signatory. And um, uh, they will soon be publishing a very comprehensive report on uh, everything that came in together with audited accounts. So uh, uh, we, we really have the good people of this country to thank. And you in the media, I mean, media general, you have been absolutely amazing in your, uh, your support, consistently highlighting the plight of these displaced persons. And, but for the coverage you gave us, I don't think that you'll have brought that attention that we needed. So um, we, we, are, we, we owe the media a debt of gratitude as well. So all the, the so far, the interventions we've seen are by private persons, N nothing from government so far? Yes, I'm sure the president will have talked about it if really there were specific, concrete um, interventions. That's why he says that they have released funds mm -hmm. to support rehabilitation. Um, we will have to be told exactly what that means. But if you look at the urgent needs of the people, which is uh, housing, resettlement, and compensation, that has not uh, been addressed. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, as I said, I think that the urgent question I have filed will mm -hmm. bring clarity, will offer some sunshine. So the, 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 the urgent us. question is about the 80 million? Yes, yes. Who and was it released to? Who what, was it released to? Yeah, what, what is it supposed to be used for? Mm -hmm. So that, you know, as members of parliament, we can follow up, we can track, carry out our oversight mandate. And then as uh, uh, constituents expecting this relief, we can also know exactly uh, what to do. Because remember that my chiefs had offered land mm -hmm. um, free of charge if anybody wants to come and uh, construct resettlement homes. And those lands are available. They've not, uh, apart from what we did with uh, uh, private uh, uh, benevolent organizations and mm -hmm. ind individuals, those lands are still available for government's use. And they remain unencumbered. There's no uh, project that has... Uh, Began on, on those pieces of land. So we'll follow up and see what exactly um, the 80 million is supposed to be used for.